podcasting from the deep depths of cyberspace. This is Darn IT Podcast, cybersecurity made simple. And I'm your host, Darren Lee G, CEO of Darn IT Group. Special episode number two. The client from hell. <laughs> No, really, I'm serious. Quiet from hell. It's time to talk about it. All right. Thank you, listeners. It is your one and only, Darn Lee G. I first want to go ahead and apologize for my tardiness with my weekly podcast. And I'll explain why. And it kind of flows into this uh, special edition podcast as I'm recording it. But in the last few weeks, has been very hectic for us here at Darn IT Group. Um, a few things had come across my attention. And I'm thinking, seeing as Halloween is essentially around the corner, that the Customer from Hell special podcast edition would be very applicable for today. So you're in for a good treat in this podcast. You're going to hear about the situation I've been put through in the last two weeks, um, some laughs, some cries, some head shakes. This is for everybody. You'll enjoy this. So let's get into it. Now, in the last few weeks, I was essentially dealing with a client from hell. Now, for managed service providers, um, managed security service providers, IT providers alike, we all come across those clients, and you know what I'm talking about because it, I'm sure it's happened to you, that really rub you the wrong way. And most of us in the service field, we have excellent, excellent desirability to help people. And I think no matter what business it is, uh, especially when it comes into the IT service or cybersecurity service industry, we have a desire to help people. And I think that's an admirable trait for most of us because we don't necessarily get that respect in return. Now, most of our clients who we work with, we enjoy working with to the most part. But there is going to be that one client that would really, really test your patience, test your time, and test your money. Now, Understand that it's really a concept that some people get, some people don't. Now, generally speaking, I have been blessed with not having to fire too many clients. And this is one that we sort of got let go or walked away from kind of at the same time, because really the situation we were brought into was during a uh, event where this business is already breached and compromised. Now, I'll tell you the story, not to worry, I'll get to it, but I'm just trying to preface this so you understand. Now, in the last week and a bit, uh, I've been going through a lot of um, uh, of legal, moral, uh, technological issues kind of all wrapped in one because, like I said, you know, I have that desirability to help and my team as well. So really, it comes down to having that desire. But what happens when your customer or your client doesn't have the same level of respect and responsibility or professionalism? Now, in our line of work, you know, I try not to compare too much about with the with the police. But generally speaking, when we show up, it's either for a bad thing or to help, or we're in a crisis, right? Now, again, I'm not completely comparing. Police deal with a a lot more issues than we do, and I have full respect for those people. But uh, when it comes to the service side of things, a lot of IT providers, uh, service providers, and security providers, we all kind of face the same sort of dynamics when it comes to our clientele. Not everyone's good and not everyone is bad. There's some people in between. There's some people in the extreme. Now, I'm not trying to rap, which maybe I could potentially have a good future in. Um, not. But 
<laughs> the, the, the principle here is understanding when to call it quits. And this is a lesson for all of you. If you haven't had your customer from hell yet, you can learn from this. And I, I hope you do. Unfortunately or fortunately, I have to redact some information. I have to um, plug up something. So I'm not really revealing who this person is or who, who this company is. But this all started about uh, three weeks ago. Uh, we were given a referral to this business from a um, other IT provider that is more IT centric. And essentially, they like to pass us um clients from hell <laughs> or no i'm kidding they usually like to uh, give us um customers that they're not able to deal with because it's outside their scope which is respectable there's some things we can't do that other companies can do that's that's life but we took we took on this customer and from the get-go there was something off and um in the beginning when you're when you're faced with a crisis or a situation when you're you're getting thrown into the boiling pot, you have to understand that nerves are a bit frayed. People are a bit frustrated, angry, upset, because downtime is essentially time and money for businesses. And a lot of business owners don't like that. And when they're not prepared, which this client was not prepared at all, mind you, when you come into unprepared, when you come through a certain cyber attack like this, it can be very, very detrimental. And I say this as a learning lesson because this all goes back into what I've been saying about, about preparing and planning. Now, in retrospect, if this particular client actually prepared and uh, had the proper controls, the policies in place, this wouldn't be a catastrophe at all because this issue would have been addressed right away. So again, to preface this customer, um, they're a pretty a large client. Um, they had over 30 users. They make over um, $10 million a year in revenue. Um, and they deal with a lot of financial information. They're a financial company, so they deal with a lot of financial transactions. The, the, the owners have been around for many years. They've, uh, they're, they're older, and they um, were born in a different time. So computers weren't in existence um, in the sort of desktop variants. Uh, over 40, 50 years ago when they got into the business and technology really hasn't served them well. Uh, they have a in-house interim IT person who knows a little about the technology there, but otherwise they've been, been chugging along. Now, this particular client hasn't breached before and uh, breached in ways what we've been told was that they got their... I believe their email compromised or no, maybe it was their, their desktops. I think they got in some, some, sorry, I lied. There was some sort of malware that was spread across the network. Anyways. So when we got the call or we got the referral, this customer is undergoing a BEC attack. So BEC is abbreviation for business email compromise. It's, it's actually a real problem in, t in today's, uh, sort of security situation because a lot of businesses are getting attacked. Now, this isn't necessary because they had a, a sort of like an on-prem slash cloud solution. This happens to a lot of users. You're seeing a lot of uh, G Suite, uh, 365 users alike also getting breached. So please don't think because you're in a cloud that makes things any any better. But I digress. Their email was compromised. What happened was uh, one of their interns um, opened up or ex, um, actually loaded a zip file. Um, now, we really didn't know exactly what was in this payload, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but uh, this individual opened up an email and uh, basically thought it was a particular document, was not trained, mind you, even in an intern. He was not trained, and no one gave him the fundamentals of do not open this, but to be honest, no one else there was. Um, this is another pitfall for this company. Not, lot, not a lot of people there got um, awareness training at all. And um, there were little controls in place. And by little controls, I mean there was a basic anti, anti -wear, anti, anti -wear, antivirus a software on each of the computers. Um, there was no firewalls. The main firewall in the perimeter was a um, decrepit, antiquated um, PC 
which had a Windows firewall, which was between the router and the main domain controller. Uh, the domain controller uh, had nothing on it. The password was password one and, uh, <laughs> and had all the important financial documents on this particular server, which the server was probably about maybe six years old and was falling apart. So all in all, hopefully I painted a nice picture for you that Suffice to say, this organization was not prepared at all. And for a company doing over $10 million in revenue a year, uh, it's more than $10 million, actually. Well, I'm just going to say $10 million. Um, they made a lot more than $10 million. Uh, <laughs> besides the point, they had the money in the bank to afford a solution. The problem is that they um, didn't, A, care, or B, got the right person or company involved involved to help protect them. So going back to this intern who opened up that link. Well, unknown to him, he opened the link and not realized it. And not really much happened from there in the beginning until the customer realized that they were getting feedback from some of their clients saying, why did you send me this email? It was infected. There was some infection. Some of them saying, you know, please stop spamming, spamming, spamming me. Take me off your your um, your email list, and that's around the time we got the call. So in in a in a erratic panic, we had to go in and stop the BEC attack. But at the same time, what we noticed was that their domain was compromised. So essentially, this payload from a uh, malicious email was actually uh, multifaceted. There were different uh, variants of, of malware that got distributed across the network. But one of the thing was, um, and I forgot to mention, on this intern's computer, there were eight, I repeat, there were eight Outlook email files sitting on that one computer. And one of those emails were the administrator. Now, again, keep in mind, this was also done on uh, approximately eight or nine different computers. So eight or nine different computers had those eight emails saved on their Outlooks on each in, uh, and individual of the computers. Now, I understand it seems like I'm making this up, but I wish I was in some points. So rule of thumb, once you store any email credentials onto your computer, no matter what, it is susceptible. Now, don't even some of these cloud-based solutions like 365, there is a way to circumvent some of these uh, multi-factor factor authentication properties as well. And, I, I, and this, I'm saying this now because I'm going to explain why I'm saying this in, in a few minutes. So no matter what, this could be a complete target. The hackers can get access to all your email, account, email accounts, which they did, and basically can screw you up from there. So their domain was compromised. What these hackers did was they actually took over the domain. They had the registrar's um, credentials, which also had the email service on top of that. So they were able to do a one-two punch and access these files. Now they actually copied their entire client database. They copied all previous emails and essentially started spamming from their web server. But they also lit up a few extra servers we found out near the end that they were also spamming their clients um, with the same sort of signature files kind of wording. It was very interesting to see how quickly they were able to manufacture spam email coming from a different email server. But I digress. Uh, as we continue to investigate about um, a, a little bit later than that, we realized that the payload actually created um, additional logins for their, their their network devices. So the quote and unquote firewall, um, the domain controller, uh, the router, the wireless access point, all network uh, accessible uh, devices were taken over. And it wasn't hard because they had the basics they had the basics password on all of them, which I believe was password one or, or password whatever. Uh, something simplistic, easy to to hack. Doesn't take much to think about it. But regardless, they did it. They took up all, all of the, their their um, devices, changed the Wi-Fi, um, created some new VLANs, etc. It really created a mass of things. But 
Uh, it, it got worse before it got better. Uh, our team eventually stopped the spam. Uh, we reduced the spam by uh, bringing in some of our our, um, our vendors, which really stepped up to the plate. Uh, I commend them for doing the great a great job um, from assisting us. There's a lot of great products and solutions out there that's over and beyond the the usuals that you probably have heard of. So it's always great to do your due diligence or feel free to reach out to me. I can tell you who they are. Um, great vendors of ours who we love dealing with because they get the job done effectively and essentially <laughs> they're the epitome of the right thing to do. Now, moving on, and long story short, we stopped the BEC attack. We we're able to get access and control of the registrar. We uh, stopped the spam, which obviously spam still trickled in by the time we left, but it got to a blow up point with with this uh, owner who um, was very upset at us, and um, I'm not I'm not going to get into the 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 mental uh, strains, the agony, the the complaining, the whining, the bitching, the all of these things that come from somebody who has a potential mental issue uh, doesn't add hope to that, and and I say that, and and I'm saying this in a I'm saying this in a meaningful way because the level of grief that the team and I have received was beyond unprofessional. It was beyond um, any sort of morality whatsoever. We couldn't even get a word in half the time without getting yelled at. And I mean, like legitimately yelled at. Um, we weren't rude at all. We we took a lot of, of agony, pain, uh, insults that... You know, yes, things do take time and money, and the project did end up, you know, costing a little bit more than what the customer was was comfortable in paying. And I can tell you what the cu customer is comfortable paying, and that was five hundred dollars. So, um, which I'm sure any of you sitting here who has a, a clue about cybersecurity will know that nothing ever costs five hundred dollars after a cyber attack. So as we kept finding issues, additional backdoors, the compromised network devices, stuff like that, obviously the bill goes up because that's, you know, uh, time in the investigation and to remedy these situations, uh, there are additional resources we have to pull in, which obviously cost more money. So the customer told us to stop what we're doing and that they were going to look for a second opinion. And again, I had no issue in doing this. The fact is they hired us and we're doing the work. I saw a bit counterintuitive, but I said, you know what, go right ahead, do what you got to do. But basically, this other IT provider um, based in Toronto kind of said the sweet, the sweet things to her to them and basically um, said that we were charging too much. Uh, they didn't really sort of at all preface what happened. And we're just saying we're charging this much to fix your email, which was more than that. And um, they basically told us to uh, stop what we're doing and take a hike. Now, yes, we, we did end up getting paid, um, had to get some of my legal team involved. But all in all, um, we, we left very uh, amicably, even though we were uh, run through the ringer quite a few times. And again, kudos to the team for having the patience for that and our vendors for having the patience to deal with that monstrosity. Uh, if you know me or dealt with, with the situation, you know who I'm talking about. So I'm sure you'll have a laugh. But the what we and here comes the morality aspect of it was we did found we did find a um, a few back doors that were opened on the domain controller as we were exiting. And um, one of the guys asked me to mention that to them. And, you know, this is something that most people would just tell them, you know what, they kind of threw us out just to forget it. I did mention something to them before I left. Um, I was the last, last person working for the company there um, who left the building. And I just gave them a warning, a, sigh, a sign that, you know, this is not the end all be all by turning on two factor authentication from 365 will not necessarily mean that you're fully protected. So all in all, the life lesson here, the business lesson here is that no matter what you try to do, 
to help a client or prospect that if they don't appreciate you, they don't respect you, or they listen to you, this is someone who you should not be dealing with. A lot of you sit there and deal with a lot of nonsense, which I can applaud wholeheartedly. But sometimes you need to look it in the eye and ask if it's worth your time, if it's worth the headache, because no amount of headaches, no amount of stress is worth the dollars in the bank. That is not, I'd rather work with people who actually take the time to listen to us, to listen to our recommendations and, and do it the way that we suggest. And 99% of the time when people do that, they're fine. You know, there's been years and years without incidences for many of the clients we have at Darn IT Group that don't have a problem who listen to us. You know, we, we don't give them stuff that they don't need. We give them enough to get going, um, to consider the budget. But we, we leave them with that fact that they are protected and we are watching them. And really, when it comes down to a customer who may be constrained, one of the lessons I think that uh, I had to take away from all this is to be able to see sort of before, before the whole situation unfolded, to see the type of personalities I was dealing with. And I think if I actually assessed and looked at the situation before taking it on, um, I may have just said, um, no, thank you. You can find someone else. So take this away. Um, and, and hopefully someone takes a lesson from this, but keep in mind that not every customer that you come, you come across will be the right fit for you. Even though they come to you and they say, I need your help. You may need to have that humility just to walk away and say, no, because it's not worth the stress. It's not worth the time or the money to deal with someone like this. Thank you so much for listening to this special edition podcast. I'm your host, Darnley G, CEO at Darn IT Group. Remember, look both ways before crossing the information superhighway. Safe computing, everyone. <laughs>